we're seeing this as a global issue. January 1st, 2022. On the day that this video is released, it will be New Year's Day. A day that provokes reflection and introspection. A day that ushers in the start of something new to come. But a day that nevertheless has always been bittersweet to me. New Year's has always served as another reminder of the unyielding passage of time. There are few things in life that are kept constant aside from death and taxes. But one is that the clocks will always keep ticking forward. One second at a time, history writes itself. And each time the clock ticks, another moment is immutably etched into the record of the universe. Another piece of the present is consumed by the past, and I'm perpetually reminded of my own inability to do anything about it. To turn it back or even slow it down just a little bit. And the reminders are everywhere. I see it in Instagram engagement announcements from high school classmates. I see it when I come home and notice an extra wrinkle on my parents' faces. Or when I visit old friends and the group is a little bit smaller now, because people are busy with family, or maybe they're sober now, or maybe they've just fallen out of touch. I see it in funerals. I see it in student loan payments. I see it in uncharacteristically warm winter evenings. I see it in my hair and under my eyes. I see it in Old Navy back-to-school commercials. I see it in the grass that's grown too long and needs to be cut. I see it in book pages dog-eared so long ago they no longer have a place worth holding. The clocks will always keep ticking, and the reminders are everywhere. At the time of recording this video, I'm both the oldest I've ever been and the youngest I'll ever be again. I'm 22 years old, and it's interesting being 22. It's almost special in its own regard in that it's the first in a series of birthdays that don't really feel special anymore. You get to look forward to driving a car at 16, legally becoming an adult at 18, and buying alcohol at 21. But once you're 22, you don't really have any more of these milestones to look forward to. In some ways, I'm a lot different from the person who I was five years ago. For starters, I've graduated college. I rent my own house. I make my own rules, and I work a job that five years ago I'm not even sure I could have told you existed. I've learned to like people, which is something I actually struggled a lot with at 17. I've become much more confident in my opinions, my sexuality, my interests, and actually developed some semblance of a personality. But in other ways, I still feel exactly the same. Those formative years are behind me, but I am, as I think many others are too, still desperately searching for a sense of purpose and identity in a world that will keep moving forward regardless of whether or not you've found it yet. This universal race against time is something that I can personally relate to, and I feel is largely the reason that I connect so deeply with my favorite narrative genre, the coming-of-age story. The coming-of-age story, as the name implies, centers itself on a protagonist on the cusp of adulthood, though the exact age for this transition isn't something set in stone. Many stories center on a character leaving home for the first time, others on a mid-twenties struggle with independence, others on a child forced into a caregiver role after a tragic accident, or any number of other prompts for transformation and self-discovery. This period is more closely defined by how age affects the character's place in society and what society expects from them in return, but this is typically around 18 in Western and Eurocentric narratives. It's a confusing and complicated thing being 18. You're old enough to join the military, but not old enough to drink. You're old enough to think you know better than everyone, but you aren't wise enough to realize that nobody really knows what's going on. You're old enough to make your own decisions, but you still go to bed surrounded by relics of younger years in your childhood bedroom, still following your parents' rules. You feel like an adult, because that's what people tell you you are. They expect you to go to college, get a job, find love, and make something for yourself. But are you really done with being a kid yet? Just like that? You wake up one morning and everything's supposed to just 
Click. Can't believe childhood is over. It was going to end one way or another. More often than not in these coming of age stories, the driving conflict is not motivated by a specific call to action or external threat, but rather the internal confusion and aimlessness that comes with the transition to adulthood. When so much of your life has been puppeteered by the guidance of parents, teachers, and other authority figures with explicit rules and instructions, it can be quite difficult to adapt when that rug is suddenly swept out from under you. Once you're fending for yourself, it can be unclear how to untangle this knotted web of consciousness and pull apart what aspects of your values, goals, and core identity truly belong to you, and which are just borrowed from key authority figures in your development. The cognitive dissonance that comes with having all of these changes at once is jarring, and frankly kind of terrifying. Nobody really tells you how to be an adult. There are no quizzes to prepare you for it, no licenses to certify that you're ready, no instruction manuals. But once the clock ticks enough times, childhood is suddenly just a series of memories and building blocks in the legacy that will be your life. Or at least, that's how society is going to treat it. The training wheels are off now, so go find yourself a nice, cozy cubicle and do what adults do. But surely there has to be something more to it, right? The naive main character of a coming-of-age story might ask. I don't feel any different. This isn't like how it happened in the books I read growing up. Did I miss something important along the way? Where's all the glitz and the glam and the character-defining experiences? Are my best years behind me already? Is it really all over so soon? Is all that's left is to just bend to the grand monotony of adulthood and become a cog in the machine? This is the quintessential struggle of the passing of time, and part of why I love these stories so much, because I've gone through it too. Everyone is operating on the same timeline. Everyone has the same 24 hours in a day, and same 365 days in a year. Everyone goes through it, but nobody really talks about how it all works. Nobody likes to admit this vulnerability, so they keep it bottled up inside, making it easy to feel isolated and alone with your thoughts in a world that seems cold and unforgiving, where it seems like no one understands you or what you're going through. In a certain metatextual kind of way, existing coming-of-age stories shape future ones and in turn affect how future generations of real-world people will perceive their own coming of age. In many stories catered to young adults, growing up is full of mystical midnights screaming out the sunroof of your friend's car, flushed cheeks and clandestine first kisses with crushes, smoking weed for the first time at a party in someone's basement, and explaining to your mom that your busted lip is from your first fight at school, but feeling at least a little bit proud every time you taste the coppery blood on your tongue. These are the experiences that are romanticized and have become a sort of theatrical norm for childhood. And sure, these things happen naturally, but we've been socialized at a young age to expect that this is what growing up is all about. So you'll see characters actively seeking out experiences like these, expecting some sort of closure that serves as a conclusion for this period of childhood. But what they rarely show is the times where you're smoking your first cigarette by your local convenience store, and it's just a cigarette. It's not romantic or life-changing. There's no soft indie song in the background. It's just a cigarette, and that's okay. At its core, a coming-of-age story is about the exploration of identity. Your protagonist starts off naive, but is tossed into the deep end of adulthood and for the first time has the opportunity to experience these things firsthand kickstarting a deeply personal and often emotional development of identity and purpose within the world. They tackle themes of independence, of grief and loss, of depression, sexuality, and gender expression. They tell us that even though life is hard, it's scary, and that we'll screw up a million times during this transition to adulthood. The product is learning more about who you really are. It might not be idyllic, it might not be romantic, but it's important to experience the awkward and ugly too. Whatever happens, it's your life and it's up for you to decide what gets romanticized. And at 18, that was something that was really important for me to hear. I'm 22 now, and though I don't quite feel entirely like an adult yet, my own coming of age story is likely ending soon. That being said, 
The struggles you have as a young adult aren't solved by a couple of birthdays. There's never a magical point where everything just clicks, so the themes still hold true, and the stories are nostalgic if nothing else. It's easy to feel totally trapped by living your life looking forward. You're stuck in the present, lost, small, and things are uncomfortable, scary even. Everyone may be going through the same thing, but nobody likes to talk about it, so it's easy to feel alone. The future will be different, full of change and new experiences, and they'll feel novel and special just like in the movies. You just have to make it there. Time passes, and what gets to be the present changes with it. You're still lost, and still small, but maybe you have a college degree now, smoked your first cigarette, had your first time, screamed out of all those car sunroofs. But it didn't feel quite as transformative as the movies made it seem. It just kind of happened. Time passes, but things still feel all too similar. You're still lost, you're still small, and you're still scared. But that's okay. Life kind of just happens. So you just keep looking forward, romanticizing the little things, and choosing what scenes will make it into your story. As always, if you've made it this far, thank you so much for watching.